They already have a mural painted of Victor Wimbanyama in San Antonio. It's like they knew he was coming. Actually, the Spurs are set up like they've been planning this for years. We always say it matters who drafts you. Unlucky stars like LeBron James have to waste years on bad teams like the Cavaliers in 03. We can already see the Mavericks might ruin the first seven seasons of Luka, but Victor Wimbanyama has a chance to win more rings than Michael Jordan. I know that sounds crazy, but once you hear this plan, it's actually realistic. But I feel bad for teams like the Sixers or the Suns. I mean, sometimes the number one pick is Markel Fultz or DeAndre Ayton. Can you imagine winning that draft? Congratulations. But the Spurs apparently only win generational MVPs like David Robinson or Tim Duncan. Their worst ever season was 1997. 20 wins, Tim Duncan. Second worst season, 21 wins, David Robinson. Now their third worst season, Victor Wimbanyama. How is that real? Most teams go years with miserable basketball, like the Kings who missed the playoffs for 16 seasons and never got a player close to this. But the Spurs missed the postseason for four years, a franchise record. The NBA city closest to them is Houston. Can you imagine how mad Rockets fans are? They're like the less successful little brother who's like, of course they won. I never get anything. The second pick will be made by the oh, oh, my God. God. What? What? Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, Spurs. No. I knew it was gonna be the Spurs! No! <laughs> but Wimby is so lucky he didn't go to Houston. San Antonio has a plan for their second dynasty. But first, today's video is sponsored by So Rare, and I am going to set up my So Rare line up for the conference finals in a minute but i want to thank all of you who have joined my private nba so rare league it's free to sign up we have over 2,000 members if you click the link in the description you get 20 free common cards also when you sign up but last week i ended up around 56 thousandth let's see if we can do better i can report that i have swapped my cp3 card for first is jalen brown Malcolm Brogdon, that is my CP3 replacement. I am very happy with that. I chose between him and Aaron Gordon. Then we are gonna go Dennis Schroeder, Caleb Martin, and Duncan Robinson, who honestly, I'm gonna swap Duncan Robinson as soon as I can, but this is my strongest lineup. You can hop into So Rare and set your lineup for the conference finals. It's absolutely free. It is so much fun to play. It is my favorite way to play fantasy. So click the link in the description to sign up for my private league and set your lineup for the conference finals. Thanks again to So Rare. It all started when Kawhi left for Toronto. It was a horrible moment losing a finals MVP, but if that never happened, they would be trying to build around a broken star like the Clippers, and Wimbanyama would be somewhere else. Then they traded DeJounte Murray, and I said the moment that happened, that was a dumb trade for Atlanta, but now it's even worse. The Spurs essentially dealt DeJounte for three unprotected Hawks picks and Victor Wimbanyama. If DeJounte was on the Spurs last year, they would have won more games and not had the number one pick. It was the perfect trade. But this is a look at all the assets San Antonio has to build around Wimby. All their own first round picks. Those three picks from Atlanta, which includes a pick swap. Three from separate trades with the Hornets, Raptors, and Bulls, plus enough cap space for a max superstar free agent. So what will they do now? Wimbanyama made it perfectly clear last night. Uh, I, I'm trying to win a ring ASAP, so be ready. Oh, trying to win a ring ASAP, huh? Does that mean the Spurs will trade for Damian Lillard? Maybe Trey Young? No, their plan is so much bigger than that. Right now, no one on the Spurs can stand in Wimby's way. They just traded away veteran center Jakob Pertl, and there's no young center he's gonna fight for minutes with like a James Wiseman. They have Keldon Johnson, who averaged 26 points a game after Christmas, had seven 30-point games last year. Jeremy Sohan is a perfect role player who's a wing that can impact things without the ball. Devin Vassell, a great shooter. Malachi Branham showed flashes. 
I think Wimby's rookie year will be all about pumping up those other guys for a future trade. Wimby could immediately make them a play-in team because of his defense. He was actually known as a defensive player until recently. He became a big prospect in the 2019 Euros when he averaged just nine points, but five blocks a game. Then in 2021, he won the French League block title and led Euro League in blocks at 18 years old. But in 2022, everything changed. Wimby went from the number one pick to the best prospect since LeBron by going to another team to develop offense. He became a better scorer on Mets with pull-up shots and moves in the post. He's also a shot creator, has an insanely tight handle for a guy who's seven foot four in shoes. But when he played against the G League Ignite, Wimby loved the spotlight against Scoot Henderson. 37 points in game one, 36 points in game two. The highlights are insane, but they also cover up his flaws. Another reason the Spurs are going to wait on this plan is Wimby's got some work to do. At just 230 pounds, he does get pushed around by bigger players. In France, it's a big step up in the NBA. His passes get picked off right now way too much because other players can see what he's about to do. And the highlights make it look like he's a Kevin Durant level shooter. He's more like Giannis. He hit about 32% of his jump shots, not much better off catch and shoot threes, and 20% off the dribble threes. That is not good. I'm not saying, of course, he's going to be a bad player, but there's room for improvement. But the good news is Wimby's got great mechanics to build on, and on his last team, he was allowed to be taking these bad shots, which led to more misses but the Spurs are the perfect team to develop him, which will happen. That is why the first year is not for a big trade, but when Wimby's ready, it will happen. A recent anonymous NBA poll asked players, which coach other than your own would you like to play for? Greg Popovich won in a landslide, which is crazy because the Spurs hadn't been to the playoffs in years. I mean, it made sense for them to say pop when the team was competing for titles. Players are like, yeah, I wanna go there and win a ring. But this is about more than that. Players love pop. But now, the free agent pitch is a lot more attractive with Wimbanyama. I think the dream target could be Luka Doncic. He will be in a position to demand a trade two years from now, which is perfect time for Wimby to grow. You may think the Mavs would never do a deal with San Antonio. They might not have a choice. He could demand to go there like AD did with the Lakers. I mean, New Orleans hated the idea of AD being in LA, but eventually they had to do the trade. Luka and Wimby would be a perfect fit on the court. Wimby's defense helps with Luka's bad habits and Wimba and Yama could still be on a cheap contract, allowing them to have depth. But that 2025 off season, is insane for free agent. Look at the superstar names available that summer. The Spurs could go for any one or two of these guys, but do not believe the people who say, oh, that's not how the Spurs do things. They don't make big trades. Uh, that's wrong. They are not gonna use all these picks they have for themselves. They know how lucky you have to get in the draft. That would be a path to losing four years and winning if you got lucky. No, the Spurs will get a big free agent or trade if it's the right timing and the right price. The one thing that could derail all of this is injuries. But Wimby doesn't have a history of foot or knee issues like other big men. The Spurs give him the best chance to live up to the hype because they have a great culture and all the right assets to build. I really hope this works out because the expectations are ridiculous. I mean, at this point, it's like, oh, no pressure, Wimby. Either be the best player since LeBron or you're a complete failure. But he does seem ready for it because just like David Robinson and Tim Duncan before him, Wimby sounds mature and professional. We see how bad immaturity can hurt a player like with John Morant, but Wimby just feels like the next Spurs dynasty. But speaking of Ja, we just heard from the commissioner, Adam Silver. He said the suspension for Ja will be serious. So what is next 
for John Morant. Check it out.